So I just want to bring in a little practice that you can do with your bed, your bedroom that helps sleep. When you are focused on helping the body heal, helping the body be very vibrant, inspired, healthy, we want to think about those nutrients. Air is the number one nutrient. Water, second nutrient. Sleep, third nutrient. Yes, food comes into it as well. But play with the idea that your thoughts are 80% of your, th your food. And your physical food is only 20% of your food. And, and then we have sleep. So we have these five factors. Air, water, the water you drink water you hold in your body the thoughts act like a vibrational nutrient your sleep and your physical food and then there's other nutrients too touch relationship connections being of service being fulfilled being in your passion expressing your creative current but with sleep sleeping in a clean field is from my perspective essential to help the body be very vibrant and vital. And it ties into a bit of feng shui. You want your bedroom to actually be very zen if possible. So you actually don't want plants in your bedroom. You don't want a lot of books in your bedroom. You don't want clutter in your bedroom. You don't want anything under the bed. You want everything super clean, super simple because we wanna think about every single object emits a vibration. It has a song, it has a story, it has a personality. In Shintoism, there's a belief that every single object has a spirit. And so the space of your bedroom, we want it to be quiet so that the body can sleep. And if you toss and turn at night, play with the idea that you might have too much talking happening in the bedroom, too many beings, the space is cluttered. So... That would be like physical activity of cleaning out the bedroom, decluttering it, making it super zen if possible. If you live in a studio space where your bedroom is literally part of your living room, your kitchen, your dining room, think about screens or curtains or even a mosquito curtain around your bed where you're still getting the air. Um the airflow, but there is some type of physical shield around the bed, creating a zone of quiet. And it's a very simple practice that you can do. And I do it typically when I'm making the bed in the morning. And you imagine a huge pink, I do a pink, you could do different colors depending on what it calls to you. It's a huge pink rose quartz orb of salt a solid orb of salt and rose quartz. And it's huge. It's like 15, I would say uh, 80 inches. No, I'd make it a little bigger than the bed. So what, what would it be? Four feet, five feet, six feet. I would say about seven feet in diameter is the size of the rose salt quartz orb that I use. So we've got this seven foot diameter rose quartz salt orb while i'm making the bed i ask that that rose salt orb quartz spin in a counterclockwise direction over the bed cleaning and dissolving all discordant vibrations around the bed in the bedroom you could make the salt rose quartz orb bigger than seven feet it could be 15 feet if you want whatever feels appropriate for you. And you're spinning it in a counterclockwise direction just for a minute, 30 seconds, and then spin it in a clockwise direction, tonifying, cleaning, balancing, stabilizing, bringing in love, bringing in light, bringing in calm, bringing in stillness, and inviting your higher self, your body to this higher self, your teams to calibrate your grids within the bedroom for a deep, restful, restorative sleep for your body, a nourishing sleep for you, soul rider, wherever that may be, and having your team be very quiet as you sleep, as your body sleeps in the night. So that is a simple practice that you can do when you're making the bed, when you're putting new sheets on the bed, big, huge rose quartz or whatever color, could be kyanite, 
It could be if you play with different crystals, you could shake it up and make it different, but you're just using another dimension and invoking the sacred shape and then thanking the crystal consciousness for supporting the sacred space. <laughs> 